Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm Dr. Hasi, and um, before we start it, actually make sure that you um, you subscribe to our channel uh, by just clicking the subscribe button in your um, in your screen. Um, today we are going to uh, we are going to actually cover uh, genetics, uh, chapter fourteen in um, in Campbell uh, Campbell biology. So I am gonna get started. Uh, now with my screen here, you see. Um, okay, chapter 14, Mendel and Gene Idea. Okay, so we have two big goals in this chapter. Big goal number one is basically, uh, students should develop an understanding of how biological information pass from one generation to the next generation. Big goal number two, explain and illustrate Mendelian genetics uh, as well as quantitative genetics and epigenetics. Okay, so Mendelian genetics, to study Mendelian genetics, we have to start with the vocabulary. Basic vocabulary, starting with uh, chromosome, gene, allele, homologous chromosomes, dominant, recessive, heterozygous, homozygous, um, monohybrid, dihybrid, quantity genes, and um, it goes on like that, right? And then loss of inheritance and more complex uh, genetics. Okay, so, Mendel used uh, pea plants as his model system. In his pea plants had many advantages, including several varieties, uh, short generation time, at least not at that time, uh, large number of offsprings, and uh, so, uh, mating could be controlled in, uh, in his experiments. So he worked on seven years, 28,000 plus uh, pea plants. He did in he grow and did experiments with. Okay, so in his uh, pea plants, he did cross pollination and cell pollination. In his cross pollination, his very first experiment was using a purple flower plant, uh, pea plant, crossing with the white flower pea plant uh, male. And then in F1, you see all his plants were purple color. That's a, then he was wondering what happened to the white flowers that he actually self fertilized self-pollinate these um, uh, purple F1s, and then look at the F2s. In F2, you see an actually three to one ratio of distribution of three purple to one dominant. And he called this purple color a dominant allele versus white color a recessive allele in P plants, okay? Allele is just a different alternative version of the same gene. So I color, if, if, if I color is a gene, and green eye color, blue eye color, brown eye color, hazel eye color are the alleles. So it, there is, there might be dominant recessive, but there are some other situations basically uh, maybe not following the Mendelian genetics. Okay, in order to um, sort out the F2 generations, we use something called Punnett square, a table, which basically uh, make it easy to uh, sort out all the possible offsprings. Um, now, so there is something called test cross. If you have an unknown, uh, an unknown uh, phenotype, and if we try to find out its phenotype, you can cross it with the homozygous recessive uh, uh, version of this uh, phenotype, and then look at the offsprings. If the offsprings uh, all look same, same color, like purple in this case, then there must be homo our uh, our unknown genotype must be. Uh, must be big P, big P, or homozygous. If the offspring are one to one ratio distribution, like half is purple and half is white, then the unknown must be uh, basically heterozygous. This is called test cross. Okay. Um, so a, also we know that genetics uses a lot of probability, and the probability we can calculate actually the uh, and model the genetics and find out using probability, okay? Um, dominance, there are some non-Mendelian uh, genetics like uh, incomplete dominance. In this case, uh, we have um, a plant called Snapdragon. Snapdragon basically um, it has red and white flowers. If you cross them, you get something pink. If you cross pink with another pink, you get one red, two pinks, one white. So we call this one to two to one ratio. This is incomplete dominance. Um, this is non-Mendelian. Um, Co-dominance is another non-Mendelian situation. Uh, 
uh, which basically what types is a good example. If parent one is A, parent B is B, we see a, a co-dominance of A, B, which is, uh, which is uh, another non-Mendelian situation. Another non-Mendelian situation is uh, basically uh, polygenic traits. That's, uh, that means um, there are more than two genes involved in a trait. Human skin color is a good example. Um, if there are three genes actually involved in this, uh, like AABBCC, if you cross this with another AABBCC, we see 64 possible offsprings and then ratios like you see here. Okay, in plants we see in um, like maize ear size in the uh, field. That's a polygenic trait. Okay, um, so and lastly there is a situation called environmental impact. In this case, basically, um, a good example is this hydrangea plants here. You see that um, if we have uh, flower, different flower color in hydrangea. This is not necessarily is a genetic situation. Flower color can change because of the pH in the soil. That means it's environmental effect. It's not genetic. It's unique. Okay, in the lower acidic um, uh, soils, it will turn blue color. More alkaline, high pH, it will turn uh, it will turn red color or pink color. You see here. So. This, uh, in human genetics, we don't use any of these. We use basically pedigree analysis. We look at the individual and go backwards to the uh, parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and then um, model the uh, pedigree system. So, and there are uh, dominant and recessive uh, disorders that actually studied in genetics. And this concludes our uh, chapter 14. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel um, and I see you in the next next video.